Good evening, good evening. I hope you are excited tonight. We are excited to be with you tonight. It is Friday Eve. That's right, Thursday evening. And it is our delight. It is our joy. It is our privilege and our honor to be with you tonight. And I'm so glad that you took out the time of everything else, shut it down, moved it aside, pushed it aside so you could be here to hear what we have to say by the spirit, what the Lord is saying to the church. We want to hear what God is saying. It is what God is saying that makes all the difference. Think about it. No matter who speaks, their voice doesn't carry as much weight as when God speaks. We know that man does not live. We do not live by bread alone, but we live by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. So there's a proceeding word. There's a relevant word. There's a timely word for you tonight. I want you to get your Bible ready. I want you to get your heart prepared to be good ground. So when we release the seed, it will bring forth fruit in your life. Some 30, some 60, and some 100 fold. This is your time. This is your season. This is your moment. You don't want to miss tonight. Get on the phone. Text somebody. Call somebody. Email them. Let's do it quickly. We only have 30 minutes to roll and flow. So I want you to come on. Move with us tonight. God is up to something big, something bold, and something beautiful in your life. By way of announcement, I want to announce this and make it very, very clear. This Sunday morning at Newness of Life Christian Center is going to be powerful. My lovely sister, natural sister, and spiritual sister is going to be speaking and sharing at Newness of Life Christian Center located at 936 Avenue Avenue in the blessed city of Tarboro, North Carolina. I know without a shadow of a doubt she's going to come with the fire. She's going to come with a relevant word to the local assembly. But I'll be in Clayton, North Carolina. That's right. I'll be in Clayton, North Carolina on Guy Road, on 581 on Guy Road at Faith City this Sunday morning, beginning at 1030. That's right. Their service time starts at 1030. Praise and worship. Now, you that are members of Newness of Life and you that are coming to Newness of Life, you need to be there by 10 o'clock. Praise and worship. Prayer and praise and worship starts at 10 o'clock at Newness of Life Christian Center. And I'm telling you, Pastor Reese and the praise team, I know they're going to be ready. They're going to be prepared. They're going to take you into the presence of God even the more through worship and song. It's going to be powerful. So you need to be there at 10 o'clock. But you that are watching it <clears throat> on Facebook Live, you will still be watching us at 1030. Amen. Listening at the word of God. So tune in this Sunday morning at 1030. Pastor Susan Sharp is going to come breaking the bread of life. Hallelujah. Well, let's get into this word tonight. Father, thank you for wisdom, knowledge and revelation. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your anointing that makes preaching and teaching easy. Tonight, we're going to go right in Jesus name. Amen. Tonight, we're going to go right into the word and we're going to talk about stay mad at the devil. This is part number eight. And hopefully we can finish it up tonight. Amen. Talking about stay mad at the devil. It's not enough to get mad. You have to stay mad at the devil. Why? Because the devil is your adversary. He is my adversary. He doesn't like us and we don't like him. That's right. We can't stand him. We hate everything he's about. We hate even thinking of him, even mentioning him. He is resented by us because we know, amen, that he means us no good. Remember, I said you can't fight what you're not mad at. See, whenever you're not mad at your opponent, you will drop your guard. Whenever you're not mad at your opponent, you will play around with him. But when you are mad at him, you want him demolished. You want him out of the way. You want him kicked aside and you show him no mercy. Listen at me. The devil deserves no mercy. We love people, but we hate the devil. And we understand that some people are used of the devil. Some people are of their father, the devil. That's not done. Amen. 
on purpose that's done through ignorance because all of the devil's plan works through ignorance, works through darkness. God comes with his word so we will have light, so we will have illumination and we will know his strategies, know his know the devil ploys and plots. So we're not ignorant of the devil's devices. Now, we said, what does Satan use or what does he use to cause us not to hate him? Because there are a lot of people that don't hate him. A lot of people tolerate him. A lot of people put up with him. What does Satan use to cause us not to hate him or cause our hatred to go away or subside? Because some people start out hating him and then it's like they take their foot off the devil's neck. Remember Joshua in the Old Testament, a man commanded those kings to be brought out and he told the leaders to put their feet on the devil's neck or on those kings neck. In other words, choke them to death, punish them. Amen. And you and I are called to what? Tread over serpents and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt us. You know, when you read the Bible, the Bible says that in Luke 10, 19, Jesus said, behold, I give you power to tread over serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. So we are to walk all over the devil. We are to trample over the devil. We are to make the devil pay for killing our loved ones, for destroying them with cigarettes and wine and beer and rape and murder and shooting and crime. All of this stuff is Satan's working. Anyway, I get into that in a few minutes, but Satan uses pleasure. He uses pleasure. He comes in the form of pleasure or comes bringing that that is pleasurable, even though it's evil. It's pleasurable, even though it's wicked. It's pleasurable, even though it causes pain. It's pleasurable, even though it destroys the home. It's pleasurable, even though it destroys the body. It's pleasurable, even though it destroys our mind and the way we think. Beer, drinking beer, pleasurable, but yet it causes corruption to you. Drinking wine, pleasurable, but yet it eats up the liver. Satan has his way through pleasure. We are to make a choice to choose God's way over the pleasures of this world. The Bible said that men in the last day will be lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. But there are many of us who love God more than we do the pleasures of darkness or the pleasures of sin. Hallelujah. See, we walked away from the evil and the corruption, even though it was pleasurable, we walked away from it in order to choose God and his way and his will. And now we who are in the kingdom, we want to do God's will. Now, we said there are four ways to stay mad at the devil, four ways to stay mad at the devil. Number one, preach the gospel of the kingdom. Now, we covered that. Go back over it. Look at it. How important it is for us to preach the gospel of the kingdom. We're in the kingdom of God and the kingdom of God is a kingdom set up to destroy and to put down and to tear down Satan's stuff that he got set up to destroy man. Hallelujah. Number two, gospel means good news. So we're to preach the good news of the kingdom. Number two, remind yourself of the devil's MO or mode of operation. Anytime when you see sickness, anytime when you hear about young people, somebody dying at 30 some years old, somebody dying at 40 some, somebody not given an opportunity to live out the length of their days or to be satisfied with long life. We know that Satan had something to do with that. Not God, not God plucking a flower, not God choosing to kill this person at 20 and kill another one at 17 and kill your child at five. No, no, no. That's not God's M.O. Jesus showed us the father's M.O. Jesus said, I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. I am come that you might live it to the full till it overflows. So God wants us to have a victorious overcoming life, a life of peace, a life of joy, a life of victory. But Satan comes with his M.O. to steal, kill and destroy. He comes as a liar. He comes as a murderer. 
He comes to take life away because he hates man, because when he sees man, he sees the image of God. He sees the likeness of God and therefore he attacks what God wants to do through man by destroying man and trying to make man mad at God or think that it was God when in actuality it was him. He disguises himself as a minister, as an angel of light. He's always coming and trying to trick man and deceive man. His plan works through deception. But you and I are to stay in the word so we won't be deceived by him because through the word we become wiser than the enemy. Number three, the third way we stay mad at the devil is fight with your prophecies and for your prophecies. Remember, God has pronounced good things concerning your life and God wants you to know what he has in store for you. So the Bible said in first Timothy chapter one. And verse 18, Paul is talking to Timothy. He said, this charge I commit unto thee, son, Timothy, son, Paul. Timothy wasn't Paul's natural son. He was Paul's spiritual son, but he calls him son. He says, son, Timothy, according to the prophecies which went before on thee. So there were some things that were prophesied over the life of Timothy that thou by them might is war a good warfare. So we are to fight with prophecies. We are to fight with those things that God declares concerning our future. That's why we wrote a book called Let the Prophet Speak. We need a word of prophecy. We need God to speak in advance of where he's taking us. We need to know about some things that are part of our lives and a part of our future so we can fight death, so we can resist death and tell death, you got to hold back because God promised me some things that haven't happened yet. Remember in the Bible, there was a man who had a prophetic word that he would not die until he saw the Messiah. Well, guess what? Many times, no doubt, death probably came at him came at him from the left, came at him from the right. Probably many things attacked his body and his mind. But the man had a word of prophecy, knowing that he could not die until he saw the Messiah. And one day, guess who comes in the temple? Jesus, as a little boy, being there with Joseph and Mary, come in the temple. And then the man knows, I can now die. I can now rest in peace. Why? Because the prophetic word has been fulfilled. That I did not die until I saw Jesus Christ, the Savior, the Messiah. So you need to understand that's very, very important. Come on, hit that like button, hit that share button. Share this message with those around you because we're in a war. And we need to be mad at the devil. Think about it. How many of our loved ones should still be around? I was talking to my wife earlier today. Her and I was talking. And we were talking about the fact, I thought about the fact, how many of my uncles should still be alive. My father should still be alive. Seeing me flow, seeing me and hearing me preach. Many of them should still be here. But because of the trickery and the sneaky tactics of the devil, amen, they're not with me, amen. Many of them died because of bad habits of drinking and smoking that led to an early grave. Thank God at 19 years old, I gave my life to Christ and of course preached the gospel and eventually led my brother to Christ. So we weren't trapped by drugs and alcohol. Thank God for his deliverance. So you and I need to understand the power of prophecy. That's right. The power of prophecy. Prophecy is powerful. And once you have a prophetic word through a real man or woman of God, you hold on to it. You don't let it go. You don't let go of what God promised you. It may look like it ain't going to happen, but you got to believe it. It may look like and feel like it will never happen in your life. Many of the things that I've seen happen in my life were prophesied over my life. And it looked like it was not going to happen. It, lo it looked like it wasn't going to happen. 
But guess what? I held on to God until I saw manifestation of what was prophesied over my life. And there are many other prophecies that I'm believing to come to pass in my life because there were great men and women of God who spoke them. And I know they weren't speaking out of the flesh, nor were they speaking out of their own mind because God spoke it to me first and it was confirmed through them. Hallelujah. So many of the things that are prophesied over your life, God will speak to you and tell you them first. And then others will come about and speak that same word and confirm and let you know that by the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. Hallelujah. If God promised you a house, no matter how your bank account looks, no matter how good that apartment may look, you stand on that promise. God, some way, somehow, you got to give me this house. You got to give me a house because you spoke it. You said it to me and then you said it through others. So I know you're not a God who will take your word back. You are a God who's true to your word. So you fight the enemy. You do warfare with those prophecies. Number four, which is our last point, is don't see yourself as just a mere man. Uh, just as don't see yourself as just mere men and women. This is very, very important because the enemy's job is to try to put us down and make us feel less than who God has ordained that we be. We are, amen, who God says we are, we can do what God says we can do, and we can have whatever God says we can have. And we need to see ourselves as soldiers. I told you that last week. We need to see ourselves as soldiers. Second Timothy two and four says no man that warrant entangled himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier. We've been called out of darkness into the marvelous light to be a soldier in the army of the Lord. Now, what is the purpose of having a soldier? A soldier job is to take territory. A soldier's job is to defend the territory that's already possessed. The soldier's job is to move us into new territory and maintain what we already have. So we're maintaining and possessing. As soldiers in the army of the Lord, we're maintaining what we currently have, but we're also possessing new and fresh territory. We are understanding that it is our job to be ready for war, ready for fight, ready. I mean, ready for a fight, ready for the battle. Listen at this in Second Timothy 2 and 4 in the ICB translation. Now, we read these translations to you last time. I want to get them now. It says a soldier wants to please his commanding officer so he does not waste his time doing the things that most people do. See, as soldiers in the army of the Lord, you're not going to get caught up and entrapped and ensnared by the affairs of this life. You understand that you're not to live life as a civilian anymore. You are to live life as a soldier in the army of the Lord. Anybody who's in the military, who's in the army, who's in the Navy, who's in the Marine, they know that they don't have a civilian life. You and I need to understand that we're not to just live life as a civilian. Get up on Sunday morning, just sleep sleep in and, and, and watch TV. That's not the way a Christian lives his life. A Christian gets up, worship God, listen at gospel music, goes to the house of God, listen at the word of God, and then understand that what he's heard, he's willing to practice and exercise. For he understands that not the hearers of the word are justified, but the doers of the work, they are blessed in their deeds. That real blessings come on us when we do, when we practice the word of God. Hallelujah. Second Timothy four, I mean, two and four in the Amplified Classic says no soldier when in service gets entangled with the enterprises of civilian life. His aim is to satisfy and please the one who enlisted him. So your aim should be as a soldier in the army of the Lord is to please the Lord. Remember, Enoch had that is his testimony. Enoch pleased the Lord. He walked with God and was not 
because he had the testimony that he pleased God. The Bible said that Jesus made a statement. He said, for I do always those things which please the father. Jesus main reason for being in the earth was out of obedience to the father. And we are to walk in obedience to God. Strive by the grace of God to walk in obedience to God, not to make us a son, but because we are his sons. Our obedience is not the way the law functioned. See, the law wanted you to walk in righteousness in order to be justified by righteousness. But under the dispensation of grace, we understand we are saved by the grace of God through faith. So we walk in obedience not to be justified, but we walk in obedience to please the Lord. Listen at Second Timothy two and four in the E.A.S.Y. translation. It says any soldier who fights in a war does not become busy with other things. So you're not to get so busy with the world system and the world's way of doing things at all. You understand that God chose you to follow after righteousness, that God chose you to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all other things will be added. Listen, he only wants to fight well to make his captain happy. Not quitting. Not talking about why I'm going through this. I don't know why I'm going through. You're a warrior. You're a soldier. You expect a fight. You expect to fight every day. Every day is a fight. Every day is a fight to, to, to walk with God. Every day is a battle. Every day when you get up, you understand this is going to be a fight. But I will win because why? I'm on the side of the Lord. And if God be for us, who can be against us? All right, 2 Timothy 2 and 4 in the NLT says, soldiers don't get tied up in the affairs of civilian life, for then they cannot please the officer who enlisted them. Listen at 2 Timothy 2, 3 and 4 in the Passion Translation. It says, overcome every form of evil as a victorious soldier of Jesus, the anointed one. For every soldier called to active duty must divorce himself from the distractions of this world so that he may fully, fully satisfy the one who chose him. See, if you want to fully satisfy God, you have to divorce yourself from the distractions of this world. Well, my family, they're having a they're having something this weekend. Pastor, I can't be there. Come on, come on, come on. You got to divorce yourself of that. Can you do it on another day? Can you do it at another time? Can you go out the service? That's the way you got to think. You can't think like the civilian when they want everybody to be there to take the picture. They want everybody. They'll wait for you. Believe me. Amen. Somebody ain't going to be on time anyway. So you might as well go ahead on. Enjoy the presence of God with your brothers and sisters. Get that word in your spirit. So when you go there and you deal with them that are involved with all the craziness, some of them half drunk, some of them cussing and fussing. You will already have the peace of God that surpasses all understanding God in your heart and mind. Because you got a rhema inside of you that you got bubbling up ready to help them. Second Timothy chapter four, two and four in the message translation, it says a soldier on duty doesn't get caught up in making deals at the marketplace. He concentrates on carrying out orders. That's what obedience is. Obedience is carrying out the orders of someone. So whenever we walk in God, we're walking in obedience. We ought to be obedient children, not fashioning ourselves after the ways of the world and the culture around us. We are different. We're chosen to be different, to talk different, to think different, to mind the spiritual things. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Remember, the church is a governing body. What is the church? It's not some little get together, little club. It is a governing body. It is a controlling body. It is a dominating body of people. It consists of kings and priests. What are we? Kings and priests. That's who we are. What does a king do? He rules. He reigns. What does a priest do? Stands in the gap between God and man. A priest has authority. 
amen, in spiritual things. Romans chapter five, verses six and 17 in the Passion Translation says, for when the time was right, the anointed one came and died to demonstrate his love for sinners who were entirely helpless, weak and powerless to save themselves. See, you and I were helpless, weak and powerless to save ourselves. Death once held us in its grip. And by the blunder of one man, that's Adam, that first Adam, death reigned as king over humanity. But now, how much more as we held, as much more are we held in the grip of grace and continuing reigning as kings in life, enjoy our regal freedom through the gift of perfect righteousness in the one and only Jesus the Messiah. So we reign as kings through Jesus. Look at this in the Amplified. Romans 5, 17 in the Amplified Classic says, For if because of one man's trespasses, lapse, offense, death reigned through that one, that's that first Adam, much more surely with those who receive God's overflowing grace, unmerited favor, and free gift of righteousness, putting them in right standing with himself, reign as kings in life. What are we to do? Rule as kings in life through the one man, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one. So we reign as kings, as a governing body. That's right. Take your authority, rule and reign. Stay mad at the devil. Walk as a king. Talk as a king, not as a natural king, but as a spiritual king, not as a natural priest, but as spiritual priest. Hallelujah. Talk to God in prayer. Take dominion in the earth. Subdue the earth. Walk as a governing body. Remember, kings rule and govern. What does kings do? They rule. They govern. Look at Psalms 82 verse 1. It says, God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. He judges among the gods. Where does God stand? In the congregation of the mighty. Who the congregation of the mighty? That's the church, the body of Christ. We are that congregation of the mighty. We're not a bunch of weak, feeble, uh, uh, what they call it? Amen. When you're out in the world, call you a little punk. We ain't no punks. Amen. We are mighty people of God. The Hebrew word for mighty that's used in this text is the masculine noun El. El means mighty men. So God stands in the congregation of the mighty men. It also means men of rank and mighty heroes. This is what that word means in the Hebrew. So God is standing right in the congregation of his mighty heroes of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. It deals, this word El, deals with strength and power. We are people full of power, full of the Holy Ghost and what? Power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You shall receive power. So God stands in the midst of the people of power. See yourself, not as a mere man. I'm just a nobody. That ain't us. That song was off base with scripture, off base with who we are in the kingdom as kings and priests. We must see ourselves as men of power. All right. The Amplified Classic says this. God stands in the assembly. This Psalms 82 and 1 in the Amplified Classic. It says God stands in the assembly of the representatives of God. What are we? We're representatives of God. God stands in the assembly of the representatives of God in the midst of the magistrates or judges he gives judgment as among the gods. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's like us being gods because we serve God. We're representing him in the earth. And our judgment is never after the flesh or after the way it looks. It's always righteous judgment because you're speaking the word of God and you're letting the word of God judge everything. That's righteous judgment. Let the word judge the situation. Oh, my goodness. Let me read Psalm 149 verses five through nine as we bring this to the close. I'm going to read this in three little translation and we'll close it out tonight. All right. It says this Psalm 149 verses five through nine says, let the saints be joyful in glory. 
What are we to be? Joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Let the high praise of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. See, they're not acting like mere men. They got the high praise of God in their mouth. Got a hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Anyhow, never let the problem get you down. When those problems come your way, hold your head up high and say hallelujah anyhow. You got a hallelujah in your mouth, but you also got a sword in your hand, a two-edged sword in your hand. To what? Execute judge of uh, vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people. Now, in the Old Testament, they fought flesh and blood. In the New Testament, we don't fight flesh and blood. We fight demon powers. So we're to execute vengeance on demon powers. To bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron to execute upon them the judgment written. Watch this. This honor have all his saints, all the saints supposed to do this. Not just the apostle, not the prophet, not just the evangelist, not the pastor and teacher, all the saints. Or to do what? Have the high praise of God in our mouth and a two-edged sword in our hand to execute vengeance against the devil because we're supposed to be mad at the devil and we're supposed to make the devil pay. Vengeance. We're coming at you with vengeance to stab, to cut, to destroy what you are about. Praise ye the Lord. Now let me read it to you in the Passion Translation. It says, uh, I'm reading Psalm 149 verses four through nine in the passion. It said, for he enjoys his faithful lovers. He adorns the humble with his beauty. He loves to give them victory. God loves to give us what? Victory. His godly lovers triumph in the glory of God and their joyful praises will rise even while others sleep. See, praise will be going out of our lips even while folks sleep. God's high and holy praises Fear their mouth, fill their mouths for their shouted praises are their weapons of war. Y'all know that song. This is how I fight my battle. Hallelujah. How do you fight your battle? With a praise, with worship. Hallelujah. With a shout. These warring weapons bring vengeance on the nations and every resistant power to bind kings with chains and rulers with iron shackles, praise-filled warriors. Notice what it said. It said mere men, praise-filled warriors will enforce the judgment decreed against their enemies. This is the honor he gives to all his godly lovers. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You see that? Now, here's the last verse as we close out at 730. Psalm 149 verses five through nine in the easy translation. You need to read it that in the E-A-S-Y translation. It says Psalm 149 verse five through nine says the people who belong to God should be very happy. That's right. Are you one of God's people? Are you one of his servants? Are you a child of the king? You should be very happy. Because he has made them great. They should always sing with happiness. Even when they lie on their beds at night. While you're on your bed, you should be singing a song. They should shout aloud to praise God while they hold sharp swords in their hands. This is how they must fight. See, you don't fight again what you don't hate. You got to hate the devil. If you're not mad at the devil, you ain't going to fight him. You ain't going to resist him. You're going to just give in to him. But the Bible says, submit yourself to God, resist the devil, and what? He will flee from you. All day long, the devil is supposed to be running from you. <laughs> Glory to God. Look what he said. To punish them for their sins, they must tie up the foreign kings with chains and put the rulers in prison. They must do that to punish their enemies in the way that is right. This is how God will cause his people to become great. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. See, how do you become great in the army? You have to win battles. You have to fight. Rambo became great. Got all those medals. Why? He fought. 
Muhammad Ali became great. Call him the champion. Why? Because he fought. Basketball team win the championship. Why did they get the championship? Because they fought for it. Until you fight for it, there's no reason for saying you're great. So you have to fight. The good fight of faith. You have to fight against your adversary and you can't fight him if you're not mad at him. Stay mad at the devil. I hope this message bless your life. I hope you receive the word of God. I'm out of time, not out of message, but I hope this message bless you. This is what we are about. We're soldiers in the army of the Lord. We're kings and priests and we're to bind the devil, put him in chains. We're not going to let him run all over us, we gonna trample over him because we're mad at him. We hate him and we're gonna make him pay for what he has done to our loved ones by helping others get saved, by helping others get healed, by helping others come into the kingdom of God. Come on now, we still, we're still here, we're saved. Right now, if we die and go to heaven, we'll be all right. But why are we still here? We're still here to help somebody else get saved. Help somebody else get healed. And every time you do stuff like that, spiritual stuff, you get back at the devil. Hallelujah. Thank you for watching tonight. I hope this message bless you. Let me make some announcement real quick. Again, we've written 13 powerful books that can be a part of your repertoire of books. And I'm telling you, if you want to really grow and develop, read something. I'm telling you it's important to read. In school, again, they have these tests at the end of grade tests. What do they deal with? Reading and doing math. We need to understand that we need to be able to comprehend what God is saying. And these books will help you do that. We have our latest three. One of them is entitled Death, A Need to Understand. When all these folk died, you need to understand so you won't blame God and charge God foolishly for something he had nothing to do with. Death is an enemy. It's the last enemy that shall be destroyed. And we need to understand that, hey, what is this thing death is all about? And we need to understand that we can have some say so in it. And this is what this book going to teach you. Amen. It's a powerful blood book. We also have a book called Long Distance Runner, Running to Receive the Prize, a tremendous book to help you out. I mean, it is awesome. Running with passion and drive and running with purpose. Amen. Talk about running with responsibility, running with right connections, running with a renewed mind. If you want to really hang in here, because a lot of people, they start out and I'm telling you, I've seen people. My wife and I have been doing this for many years, 38 years. Amen. And I'm telling you, we've seen people look like, man, they will never backslide, never give up on the Lord, but they don't make it the distance. We want you to go the distance, long distance running, runner running to receive the prize. And then our latest book is entitled, Let the Prophet Speak, Show Us Our Way. Nothing can help you like a good read. And I'm telling you, I'm excited because I'm not the only author out here. Other people are writing. Other people are using their gifts and talents to exalt God in a special way. And we thank God for them. I think on last week, I told you about a few of them. Amen. We have a book by Matthew Tillery Contact. Amen. His ministry. He has a book entitled, The Gates of Hell Shall Not Prevail, You Win. I've read this book. It's good, well worth the purchase. Amen. And we thank God for it. This man of God give a testimony in here how the devil wanted him to kill himself. Wanted him to commit suicide. But thank God he didn't because he had a wife that helped him not do it. It's a good book. Amen. Thank God the gates of hell did not prevail against him because he's a mighty apostle in the kingdom of God. Amen. Now, to get this book, you got to contact, amen, the church. And it's called Tri Faith Ministry in Rocky Mount, North Carolina. Amen. The number to call is 252 977 3002. 252-977-3002. Also, another young lady, amen, that we went to college with. We went to Shaw University with this young lady. Her name is Brenda Taylor Rice. She has a book called Don't Be Gripped by Fear. Amen. And a lot of people are afraid, amen, due to this pandemic and other things. But this little book, it's a little small book that is loaded 
with truths, amen, to help you win, amen, deals with prayer and meditation and praise and uh, uh, a number to call to get this book. Uh, let me give you the number. All right. Let me take my time and find it here. OK, is two, five, two, six, five, seven, nine, one, two, 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 five, two, six, five, seven, nine, one, two, two. All right. And that's Brenda Rice. And she's in Henderson, North Carolina. We love you, Sister Brenda. Thank God for you and Pastor Seaman Rice doing a great work in Henderson, North Carolina. And then this last book I want to talk about, amen, is one of our very own. Amen. We love this young lady. Amen. A special young lady to us and to our ministry. None other than Natasha Aline. She has a wonderful book. I'm telling you, if you are a business man, if you are a business woman, I'm telling you, you really, really will enjoy this book. It is a good read. Again, these are books not that I'm talking about and haven't read. Amen. I've read these books. And if it ain't good, if it ain't about nothing, I would not be pushing it or endorsing it. And I endorse other people's material because I understand when I wrote my first book called How to Overpower Discouragement. Amen. I didn't have people pushing me and everything. But God pushed it himself. And in less than two weeks, I sold over five about a week, I think about a week, I sold over 500 copies of it. And it's a still a powerful book today called How to Overpower Discouragement. And I can't even hardly keep that one. I had to make a new, new order uh, today. Amen. How to Overpower Discouragement is a good book. Amen. To help you out. Amen. And it's because a lot of people get discouraged and they feel like killing themselves. Amen. But we thank God for that. And spiritual upgrading a lot of our books. We are having to reorder again out of many of these books. Amen. I'm sorry. Didn't, didn't do it. Oh, yeah. It's called How to Overpower Discouragement. A good book. But anyway, getting back to this wonderful young lady. Amen. And we thank God that God has given us the privilege to pastor her. Amen. Uh, Natasha is a hairdresser. She has her own salon. Amen. And uh, she has uh, also uh, what they call it employees under her. So she's not just writing this and talking this as one who hasn't experienced it. She has a wonderful book and it's entitled Having the Dexterity, Tenacity, and the Audacity to be Successful. Now, this is very, very important when you're out in the corporate world because one thing about the corporate world, it's a shrewd world. I'm telling you, it's shrewd. And many of you that are going to work every day, even if you're on a natural job going to work every day, you need a book like this. Why? Because you're dealing with <laughs> people that are not saved. You're dealing with people who will lie, cut your throat, back, bite on you and do some everything. And you got to have some dexterity. You got to have some tenacity. You got to have the audacity that say, I'm going to succeed in spite of all of this, in spite of what's going on in my life. Now, here's some of the topics that she got in this book. Amen. One is entitled Building and Developing Your Dexterity. Another one, Tackling Tenacity, Continuing to Exist, Awakening Your Audacity. And listen at this chapter, The Underground Sound, Go Underground. Amen. It's a tremendous book. Amen. That I guarantee you, amen, that when you she's given testimonies in it of her own life, about her own situation. And I'm telling you, amen, it is a good read. You can read it in one setting, no doubt. Once you get a hold of it, you're not going to want to put it down. Amen. And so you need to contact, amen, her at this number. There's a number I'm going to give you right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To contact the book line is 252-382-3858. Three eight two three eight five eight. Amen. So you can uh, visit the site called Healthy Concept uh, Concepts. Amen. Healthy Concepts. Healthy Concepts. I N C. That's Incorporated. Dot com. Amen. And that will give you more information of uh, uh, booking her, and if you wanted to speak, Amen, concerning this book, because I'm telling you, she has a lot of things to share with you if you're in this business world. Amen. And so we're excited about this book and you can get you a copy by contacting. Amen. Her. Amen. 
and given it. Uh, also, there's another number. I'm sorry. Let me give you this number. Uh, 919-679-1706. That's right. Amen. If you desire to more, know more. All right. That's CEO. The CEO founder. Uh, okay. Okay. I'll give you the other one. Okay. 252-382. 252-382-3858, okay? 252-382-3858. It is a good book entitled Having the Dexterity, Tenacity, and the Audacity to Be Successful. Hallelujah. It'll help you out real good. All right? We thank you for listening tonight. Thank you for watching tonight. Now, if you're not saved, if you're not born again, let me tell you what you need to do. You need to call this number, 252-563-5382. Listen, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? If you're not saved, give us a call at 252-563-5382. Not now, but right after this program goes off, we would love to talk to you. If you're a backslider, time to come on back home. Time for you to get it together. It's not hard because you're not relying on what you're doing. You're relying on what he has done. Christ has already went to the cross, shed his blood and gave his life so you could come back home. And he will blot out all the stuff you've done. Don't let people have you on the guilt and condemnation to the point that you don't want to be saved again. Well, I can't face those folks no more. I used to go to that church. No, I'm, I don't want them. to. No, come on. Let me tell you something. We are mature enough to handle your mistakes and God is loving enough to forgive you and pardon you. So come on back home. Get in this thing and help us fight the devil. Stay mad at the devil. We know it won't you. It was the devil who deceived and tried to trick you and lure you away from the things of God. We're mad at the devil. Let's fight together. All right. These messages can be viewed again on Facebook. They can also be viewed on YouTube. Check us out again on Facebook and also on YouTube. Amen. A few minutes after we go off. Also, right down these times, we're here every Tuesday night on Facebook from 730 to 830, teaching you the word of God. And we believe in studying the Bible on Thursday. We're here every Thursday, giving you 30 minutes of teaching. Now, we've got some announcement that makes us go a little bit over, but we give you 30 minutes of information from seven o'clock to seven thirty. That's going to be information time of impartation, sharp points, because we believe Proverbs 27 and 17 says that iron sharpen it iron so that the man sharpen the counsel, the countenance of his friend. We want to sharpen you, awaken you, alert you in the things of God. Every Sunday morning at 10 o'clock, Newness of Life Christian Center, we walk in those doors at 10 we get there a little bit before 10 so we can sit down, get in place. Amen. And we call that 10 o'clock. Woo! Get ready to crank up that praise and worship. And I'm telling you, it is radical in there. It is radical in the house. Because why? We are exalting God. And listen, if you don't have the praise and worship CD, oh my God. Pastor Reese years ago wrote these powerful songs and put them together. Not a one of them is off base with scripture. Everything that is being sung is online and on point with scripture. And you need to call our office at 252-641-0098. Stop hesitating. Stop procrastinating. Stop saying, I'll do it. I'll do it one day. I'll do it tomorrow. Let me tell you something. It is a killer. Procrastination is a thief and a robber of time. And you need to stop wasting your time and make your moments count. Get this CD. It will bless your life. Call us at 252-641-0098 and we'll get this to you each and every Sunday at 1030. We're right here on Facebook Live. You can hear the preach and talk word coming live to you from the sanctuary. That's right. We got our sound right now. We're knocking ready to knock the devil out. We did, we had, we did a whole revamping of our uh, television system and we are on the go for the Lord ready now to make a mark for the kingdom of God. Now there are several ways to give to our local assembly. If you're not a partner 
of this ministry. What are you waiting on? Many of you watchers, many of you know that God sees us as good ground. You're being blessed by the ministry. You're growing, you're maturing, you're developing, you're learning, you're being charged, you're being effective. It's time to give back. Listen, if you are a person who gets a check every week or every two weeks or every month, be a tither. Not tithing because you're scared God going to do something to you. That ain't the way God works. You're tithing out of your honor for him. You love him, you honor him, and you keep him as first in your life. Every time you print uh, giving tithe, you're saying, God, you're first. You're number one. And guess what? When you keep God number one and make him a priority, then he makes you a priority. If you put God way down here, you're making a big mistake. Because you're making him happen to put you way down here. Those that honor him, he will honor them. All right. So mail that check or your money order to Newness of Life Christian Center, P.O. Box 1462, Tarboro, North Carolina. Newness of Life Christian Center, P.O. Box 1462, Tarboro, North Carolina, 27886. Also, another way you can give is by downloading the Van Co mobile app. V-A-N-C-O, mobile app, the Vanco mobile app. Download that and type in Newness of Life Christian Center. When you type in Newness of Life Christian Center, amen, we're going to pop up and you can sow a seed. So download the Vanco, V-A-N-C-O, mobile app, hallelujah, and type in Newness of Life Christian Center. Now, to bless us personally. And many of you always trying to do that and want to do that. And I think you should do that because let them that labor in the word that teach you in this word. Amen. Communicate, communicate unto them that teach you in the word. And we've been teaching you in the word. So to bless us, what you got to do, go to your cash app, type in that dollar sign and the word R-E-V, the letters R-E-V-S-H-A-R-P-E, the dollar sign. R-E-V-S-H-A-R-P-E. And that way you can be a blessing to our ministry. Shout out to N-O-L-C-C. I mean, I'm sorry, it'll be a blessing to my wife and I. I'm excited. I'm excited. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. But uh, shout out to N-O-L-C-C members tonight. Shout out to Lisa Lyon tonight. Way to go, Lisa. Keep watching. Shout out to Cynthia Wilkins, Minister Danny. Amen. Trina Williams is watching. Tanika. Tanikia. All right, Tanikia. I'm looking forward to seeing you real soon. Amen. Henna and your family. Amen. Shout out to Betty Pender tonight. Uh, Prophetess Sylvia Anderson. Amen. She has a new book. I'll be telling you about her, her writings too. She has a children's book that's coming out. We're excited about God is letting people write. Listen at me. And these people are not white. They're black. There's black brilliance. Oh, man, I don't want to get into that. I thought talking about that. Amen. Because all the time they always show us as crooks and thieves. Uh, shout out to Gloria Knight tonight. Vincent Bellamy, my man. Yeah. Amen. You and your lovely wife, Evangelist Jackie Bellamy. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We shout out to all of you. Amen. My man, Curtis uh, Knight. Uh, shout out to you, too. I mean, Curtis Bryant. Amen. Shout out to Curtis Bryant on tonight. Amen. I know you're going to watch it. I know you're going to be blessed by it again. Amen. We're excited about these uh, upcoming authors, these people that are putting down things so that after they're dead and gone, you'll still have a good read. Again, get these books. Amen. By Apostle Matthew Tillery. Uh, the gates of hell shall not prevail. You win. Don't be gripped by fear. Brenda Teller writes. Amen. And again, Natasha Aline, we're excited about you and Brother Kimwood, amen, putting together a book called Having the Disparity, Tenacity, and the Audacity to Be Successful. Again, we thank you for watching tonight. We love you. Have a great, great week, weekend rather. And don't forget, in Clayton, North Carolina, Sunday morning at 1030, I'm coming to Clayton one day only one day only 10 30 Sunday morning. If you're anywhere near Clayton, if you're in the Raleigh area, if you're in the Cary area, if you anywhere in near that area, November the 21st at 10 30, we're coming to Clayton at uh, 581 Guy Road. Pastors David and Vicki Foster are the uh, 
pastors there. The church is called Faith City. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. It's going to be powerful. Until then, you be blessed. Have a good night.